finest bay in the Far East, large enough to accommodate all the fleets of the world. We shall dock at Pier 7, a new double-decked concrete structure, 1,000 feet long, built and maintained by the Philippine government. Awaiting us is the famous 80-piece Philippine Constabulary Band, winner of the grand prize at the St. Louis Exposition, and still one of the world's best. Facing at the pier is old Spanish Manila, or Intramuros. Though begun 350 years ago, it has endured well, being regarded as the best example of medieval walled town in existence. Within this gateway is old Fort Santiago, long the citadel of the Spanish city, but since 1901, headquarters of the United States Army in the Philippines. This is the 31st Infantry returning from morning parade on an expanse just outside the walls, where was once a moat, but which is now an 18-hole municipal golf course. Intramuros, with its narrow streets, is reminiscent of Madrid, except that the little two-wheel carriages are caramatas, and the Filipinos wearing camisas with puffed sleeves resembling bird cages are quite exotic to Spain. The camisas are made of piña, or finely split pineapple fiber, not unlike mosquito bar, and are worn over elaborately embroidered chemises. The rising generation seems to want what it wants when it wants it. Perhaps that is why Manila is the only considerable city under the stars and stripes where prohibition is prohibited. Manila's most beautiful women generally are those with Spanish blood in their veins. This pair has been at Aurelia's in the walled city shopping for bundle hats, which are erroneously called Bangkoks in the United States and Europe. The best bundles manufactured in small towns, for which they are named, compare favorably with the finest of Panamas. Now they are in their Karamata, note the elegant self-conscious charioteer, and with their purchases are returning to their homes on the opposite bank of the Pasig River, which divides modern Manila in twain. From the roof of the Masonic building, we look down on Jones's Bridge, with the walled city on the far shore in the distance. Upstream, on an island in the river, is El Hospicio de San Jose, an asylum for foundlings administered by the Sisters of Charity. In the north wall of the convent is a turning wheel for the receipt of abandoned children. This infant, barely a month old, is being deposited herein by a chauffeur who bowed to me, the sisters did not question him, that he is quite unaware of the parent's identity. Another turn of that wheel will admit the nameless mite safely within the convent, where it will be reared, educated, and taught an occupation to enable it to be self-supporting. These little girls, all of whom were similarly forsaken in babyhood, are but a few of the 800 who now find asylum within San Jose. They devote every Thursday to the mending of their own clothes, a task of which they are especially fond, since they are taught to take pride in tidiness and cleanliness. This pretty little lady is a mestizo, that is, half Filipina and half something else, probably Italian. While this a toothless youngster swears that she's an American, like Will Rogers, and just as proud of it. On the north bank of the Pasig is the Escolta, the principal retail street of American Manila, lined with banks, theaters, and drug stores. Not chemist shops, but drug stores, with ice cream sodas, postcards, and pay telephones. The local carabao, or water buffalo, has a wider spread of horn, an uglier anatomy, and a more invidious disposition than any of its tropical brethren. Still, it is the main beast of burden, its speed being wholly commensurate with the industry of the average peasant. One of the foremost sources of wealth in the Philippine Islands today is tobacco, great loads of which are carted through the city streets. Yet the plant was unknown here until imported from Mexico by the Spaniards in the 16th century. Now extensive cigar factories flourish, into which the leaves are brought in bales, then graded as to quality as to length and strength, before being delivered to the expert uh, cigar makers, of whom one factory has more than 4,000, while in this room alone are 700, all engaged in entiring lady nicotine, be she trim or a trifle plump, in raiment that will make man's mouth water. No cigar anywhere today is produced under more rigidly enforced sanitary regulation than is this one. The Philippine government supervises the industry under invariable standards of excellence and under its own official label, which is affixed to every box that leaves the factory. The cigars must be made from good, clean, selected tobacco, properly cured and seasoned, and from which all stems, dust, and scraps have been eliminated. 
No cigars made between sunset and sunrise may be graded as standard. This is Lady Nicotine at her best, a mild, plump, seductive creature. Just north of Manila's business district is Billabit Prison, embracing 17 acres and harboring 3,500 transgressors of the law, the largest penal institution in the world. Retreat every afternoon at 4.30 o'clock is an impressive half-hour ceremony when visitors are admitted to a central tower from which the ward buildings radiate like the spokes of a wheel, thereby enabling spectators to view the entire scene with ease. Selections by the prison band opens the review, following which the entire company engages in short calisthenic exercises, a feature that distinguishes Billabit from other penitentiaries. Here the men are treated not unlike soldiers in barracks, being subjected to a system that grants privileges and meets out punishment according to conduct and industrial skill. Uniforms of different colors indicate whether they are trustees, prisoners of the first, second or third class, or apprentices. A drill by the crack billabit scouts, bearing wooden arms and comprising chiefly life and good behavior prisoners, concludes the afternoon uh, display. This is a part of the model program of regular work, recreation and rest, which the authorities believe prepares the inmate for eventual good citizenship. In fact, so beneficent is the regime that most of the guards are stationed outside to restrain immigration rather than inside, as is customary, to thwart emigration. Tondo is the Nipa shack quarter of Manila, where native huts are set on stilts to provide plenty of ventilation and stables for the livestock beneath. To the westward towers Corregidor Island, above which hover perpetual banks of clouds. Almost every evening, the last rays of the dying sun stream through. So gorgeous that Manila's reputation for matchless sunsets pursues us to whatever port of call.